Welcome to the show called Style Forward. And on this show, we will talk about anything that has to do with style, from healthy eating to skincare. So let me start by introducing myself. My name is Joey Oso, and the hair and beauty business is my passion. I love what I do, and I basically try to match the person's body features, physical features, bone structure, you name it, with the perfect hairstyle that makes them work perfectly together. I'm all about making everybody look beautiful. I love freelancing on photo shoots, fashion shows, weddings, events. I'm specialized in hairstyling, but I do haircuts. So today's episode, we're at the bridal house called The Cotton Bride. We're gonna bring in three models with the designer, and we're gonna have the, the designer speak about the bridal dresses in detail. Also what I have lined up is a questionnaire for the designer. It's gonna cover basically about his business, the Cotton Bride, and questions for the viewers at home, the brides at home, to help them. The one big thing that brides have and grooms have are those butterflies in your stomach about planning for a wedding. And they should be, because planning for a wedding, for a wedding is difficult. I've done a ton of weddings. I've talked to tons of brides, bridesmaids, mother of the bride, grandmother of the bride, and what I've taken away from planning of weddings is that it's a headache. And what I've taken away also is that organization is a big deal. You and your spouse should have a passion for what you choose to plan. Let's say you're gonna coordinate the flowers or you're gonna coordinate the, the alcohol from the wedding party. Make sure you enjoy doing it and it makes it a lot easier for both of you to get the things running smoothly. People say, oh, let's get tips from family and friends. They're great, from what I, but from what I heard from the people I've styled hair for weddings, uh, it causes irritation and it, can, and it can add confusion if you ask family and friends about the, pr the planning process you're doing. So just be knowledgeable of that. We're gonna calm those butterflies in your stomach. We're gonna make it a lot easier for you and we're gonna handle the biggest purchase you're ever gonna make on your wedding. What purchase is that? Your, your bridal dress. Today my guest here is Fikri. We're at the Cotton Bride and uh, we're gonna be talking about his bridal collection, which is all around me. And I just wanna ask you a few questions about your collection sure. and what, you know, pretty much what it entails. Can you give me a little story about your bridal house? The, uh, we started the Cotton Bride uh, several years ago. Um, we wanted to create a, a bridal collection um, that uh, was easier to wear for girls, something that was lighter, something that was um, easy, uh, just uh, cooler uh, with all the destination weddings that were going on. And uh, when we went out to look for fabrics, uh, most of the fabrics that we loved ended up being cotton. Mm. And that's how we ended up calling it the Cotton Bride. That's great. What are your clientele age ranges? Uh, I would say that most of our clients are 25 and up from there. We do not see too many young brides under the 25 year old age range. Um, most of our customers are professionals. Uh, it's just worked out that way. They're doctors, lawyers. Uh, we, we have all kinds of people, but we have a ton who are professional, which always surprises us. Uh, and, um, but we go all the way up. Uh, we just shipped a dress this week to uh, someone who's uh, 65 and getting, getting married. Wow. Do you sell plus size gowns? Oh, absolutely. Uh, most of our work that we do is custom. So, um, you know, if a bride comes in, we're always uh, going to work with her measurements. And so it doesn't really matter whether she's a size zero or anything else for that matter. We just need to have her here to measure and that's how we make the dress. We do not really we have one line that we bring in, uh, that we design, and it's imported, which comes in straight sizes, so there's a little less flexibility on that one. That's the VCD line. But most of the dresses that we make are from our flagship collection, okay. and uh, those uh, are always made to measure. Great. 
Great, awesome. How would you feel about um, larger body types, skinnier body types, larger body types, should they have a flare going on all around the dress, skinnier body types, should they be tight fitted? What's your opinion on The that? truth is, um, even we who have worked with so many brides over the years, we have no clue until we have an idea when a bride comes in what might look good on her but we're always surprised when we put her in some things and then realize wow this is this looks a lot better than we thought it would wow. so it's it's a difficult question to answer i don't want to assume anything when someone okay. walks in we have to see her in the actual dresses great great good and she has to see herself great great so how are brides spending their money this season, summer 2014? Big budget or not? How do you feel like your trends are happening now in, uh, in May? I don't know about other bridal companies, but the type of brides that uh, seem to come to us, they're really grounded uh, individuals. They're um, not interested in spending outrageous amounts of money. Our price points typically range for our flagship collection from about two to three and a half thousand for a custom-made gown whereas the vcd collection is priced from a thousand to two thousand and that seems to work uh, you know between the two collections we seem to be able to satisfy most of the brides that come to see us Great. we do not see the the bride that's spending twelve thousand dollars or fifteen thousand dollars that is not what we are about. Okay. Advice about how to go about shopping for a wedding dress at your store. Is there a strategy behind it? Or? The advice for uh, try on as many dresses as you can. That's what uh, we try and do if a bride walks in here. Uh, our appoint We only see one bride at a time and our appointments run a minimum of one and a half to two hours and the whole purpose is for her to try on as many pieces as possible so that she herself can see what she looks like. So if you're a bride who's just beginning to do bridal shopping, shop around, go to many different places. Don't settle on the first dress. See what other things look like. Even if you love the first dress, just go. It's the one time in your life when you're going to be able to see yourself in all sorts yeah. of silhouettes yeah. and you never Don't know what's going to work. shopping when it comes no, to bridal dresses. there's no reason for it. Okay. Tips on buying a bridal gown, like when should they buy it and how many months prior to the wedding date do you feel? Um, typically brides who start shopping from nine months to one year ahead of their wedding mm -hmm. will be okay. I think that's a really good time frame to do it. You can even go a little shorter. For us, because we produce so many of our own dresses, we can go with a much shorter time frame than many bridal stores who still need to place an order to the designer and then have it shipped in and then do alterations. Gotcha. So brides need to be aware that if they go to a store uh, four or five months before their wedding, there's a good chance that they may not be able to get certain styles. Mm -hmm. So our advice is always give yourself anywhere from six months to 12 months lead time what are some of the new wedding trends happening this season? In the bridal industry as a whole, there is this big movement away from the formal, from the more traditional looks to more uh, fluid, less constructed um, silhouettes. Uh, when we started out in 2007, we were one of the only ones doing what we do. Wow. Now there are other companies and other bridal stores specially catered to the bride who is not interested in the big dress with all the beading. This is, it's, it's, it's slowly happening. So this there's a, is a trend. It's not a trend that's happening in 2014. It's a trend that's in happening in the, in the bridal industry mm. as a whole. Okay. That's what we've seen. Do you also sell bridesmaid dresses and flower girl dresses? We get calls for that all the time, but we do not. Um, it's, uh, most of our production, like I said, is done right here in New York, here at our studios. And um, the price point at which we would be able to sell a bridesmaid's dress or a flower girl's dress would be far too high for the average bridesmaid or the average flower girl. It has to be made somewhere where the costs are much less. We haven't developed that okay. uh, part of the business. We'd love to though, we'd great, love to. Great. Your take on other color bridal gowns besides white? From my experience, I get 
uh, we see a lot of emails from brides who are very excited about many of the dresses that we have here or the f few dresses we have here in color. We get a lot of emails mm -hmm. on those. When those brides come in, when it comes actually time to making the final decision, they tend to shy away. Oh, okay. So wow. there's always the bride. We just had a bride who got married and she wanted a black and white lace bodice over her white gown. So that's the exception. Mm -hmm. uh, I think most brides are still staying within that uh, range of, of, white. of white. Very few are going pure yeah, white, I've done but a lot certainly off-white and much, even much darker shades, as you can yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, and I like the, the definitely the darker shades yeah. too. Do you ship your dresses, handle brides outside of New York City? How does that work? Um, we are based in New York City and we're the only ones in the world that do cotton wedding dresses, so we get orders from all over the place. And um, the uh, only thing that limits our ability to cater to a bride on the other side of the world is whether or not she can get us her measurements, uh, because so much of it is custom made. Mm -hmm. So as long as we have the bride's measurements, as long as the bride knows that she may need to get it a little altered at the other end when she gets it, mm -hmm. if she's not able to come here for the actual fitting, yeah. then we'll ship anywhere in the world, okay. and we have shipped. Who should the bride take to the bridal shop to buy a wedding dress? In-laws, moms, dads, sis? That has to depend on the individual bride. It really does because I have been really amazed when uh, a general rule of thumb is the, f the more people there are, the more confusing it can be. Yeah. But even that, I've seen it not have any effect because we've had a bride here with more than six people in her bridal party and it's gone really smoothly so it all depends on who's in her life who's annoying to her <laughs> and who she wants to be joining her okay. at, at this shopping okay, experience. Okay, fair enough, yeah. fair enough. Do you sell wedding veils, headpieces, gloves, accessories? We sell only very simple veils. That's what we do because a lot of the brides will uh, the veil is worn for such a short period of time that most of our brides who are getting married in the countryside or on a lake, mm -hmm. they want a veil to just walk down the aisle, so we'll make that for them. But we have not gotten fully into making veils, and we certainly don't do any other kind of accessories. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. We just Great. make dresses. How about storing the wedding dress after the wedding event? Do you know anything about that, how a bride would store a wedding dress? The only thing I tell the brides is be careful of where you take your dress because uh, the prices some of these dry cleaners want to charge to store a dress sometimes is more than the dress itself. Wow. So please do your shopping and don't be surprised if you are told that it's going to cost you know half of what you paid wow. for the dress. I didn't know that. There are places you can get it for much cheaper. Um, be careful about okay. that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good to know. So um, the Cotton Bride, they're located on 3913 23rd Street, Long Island City, Queens, New York. Uh, this is Fikri. His phone number is 718-729-9878, uh, thecottonbride.com, or you can email him at info at thecottonbride.com. Come check him out. He's got some beautiful dresses around me. So we have your three models here. The hair was done by Joey Oso, which is me, and I use Amika products. Their website is loveamika.com. The makeup is It Cosmetics and Ardell Lashes, and the makeup artist is Josephine Fusco. Her website is makeupbyjosephine.com. She's an excellent blogger. You can check out her blog on the same website. All right, here we are now with Lauren, the model, and we're going to discuss the dress that she's wearing from the Cotton Bride. Fikri? Yeah, this, this dress is called our Valerie dress. It's from our VCD collection. It's based on the Susanna dress from our flagship collection, which has uh, historically done really well, and it works for a lot of different brides. It's one of our favorite styles. It's um, basically you're looking at a dress that is made out of a cotton lace over cotton lining, and uh, all the uh, embellishment on it is pretty much just the little details and handwork that go into making this beautiful yeah. style. The circle skirt is very wide, it's very ample, it's very easy to move around in. Some brides ask us to cut off the train because they don't want it dragging, but this one has a short sweep. Uh, and, um, you know, the original dress, the V went down a little deeper, 
and grandmother didn't like that ah. so much, so we decided to close it up a little bit. But basically, you're looking at a waistline uh, cut dress with a with a circle skirt. Works for many different it's beautiful, uh, brides. very beautiful dress. I love it. As with most of our dresses, it's all about trying to create drama, but still retaining that feeling of simplicity without overwhelming the dress. This is the back of the Valerie dress, and uh, it's a good example of most of uh, our uh, styles. They're very simple. Uh, the, the drama comes from details which are not necessarily to do with beading or flowers. In this case, you have the very strong V-back strap, so her back is all exposed. And then you've got a short row of covered buttons, and that's pretty much the dress. You've got the sweep in the back, and that is optional. If she wants it longer, we can make it a little longer. If she wants it shorter, it can be cut off. But this is the dress. And we have the next model here, Tess, showing a beautiful gown that I love. Do you want to tell us about it, Fikri? Sure. Uh, again, uh, as you see, very little going on on this dress in terms of beading, in terms of uh, uh, extra details. Everything is about the fabric, everything is about the handwork. And uh, in, this, in the case of this dress, this is our Malaika dress from our flagship collection. You've got this really interesting French stripe cotton lace. And what we've done is we've actually put color tools underneath it mm, wow. so that it pops out. Mm. We did not match the lace with the tool underneath. We've actually used a darker colored tool and that's what gives the pop when, when you look at the lace. Up at the top and the bodice is all hand draped and then you've got this simple satin sash at the waist and uh, I don't know if you can see it but the skirt is cut so that the back is just a little bit longer than the front. It's very 50s. It's a very simple dress, it's a very fun dress. This is the back of the Malaika dress. Again, not much to say. It's all about the fabric, it's all about the way that it's draped at the waist. Um, we tried to keep the neckline a little lower so that there's a lot of openness. And it's just a simple, fun dress, um, easy to wear cotton lining. I love it. I don't know how you can go I, wrong. Yeah, that's a, a nice way dress. to have a nice yeah. summer wedding dress. That's yeah. really beautiful. So here we have Madison with a beautiful dress. Let's hear more about this dress, Fikri. Well, one of the things that people don't know when they hear the name Cotton Bride is that they think we don't use any other fabrics, but we do. We use natural fabrics. That's mainly our goal. It's just that we happen to love cotton. In this case, this is a silk satin dress. And uh, we've paired it with um, a French Alençon lace, which is a cotton-based lace, which comes from France, which then has been, uh, uh, been the beading on it is very vintage inspired. And it creates a, a very dramatic look. It creates one long silhouette. It sits right on the shoulder. And it's one of the most dramatic looks that we have in the collection. Beautiful. Yeah. I love it. So this is the back uh, of this dress, and here you can really see the blush color of the silk satin coming through and the um, antique lace on the dress that matches it so well. And um, many brides ask us to make the back part even lower so that they can see more of their skin through there, which we can do. Um, but this is a pretty grand dress and looks great for most, most types of weddings. And this is the back of the dress. And as you can see, again, very simple, uh, but the details are all in the fabric and in the beading that is on the dress. Um, in this case, it's all pearls, it's vintage pearls on the blush uh, colored silk satin. So it creates a nice contrast. It's got a big train, um, again, optional. However long the bride wants it, we can make that. Um, but this is a pretty grand dress, appropriate for most, uh, most weddings. Thank you guys for watching this show. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like our page on YouTube and subscribe to our page. Also, check us out on Facebook at Style Forward Show. And you can email us at stylefowardshow at gmail.com. Check out our links to our websites, and there you have it. 
and please stay tuned for future episodes.